All right, we are broadcasting live from Swain Room 009, here to bring you the second episode of Sully Spotlight. During this episode, we're going to talk about who I think is going to be the number one draft pick and how it could benefit that team, uh, whoever's taken first overall. So just a reminder, I'm an assistant writer for the Clutch blog. Check us out at www.wordpress.com slash clutch blog and uh, get the latest college basketball uh, highlights, updates, news, tourney talk, you name it. Anything college basketball, we're there for your needs. So basically what the, it's going to come down to with the first overall pick is going to be either Jill Okafor or Carl Anthony Toms. Now both these are great, great big men. Both play center. Uh, Jill Okafor, 6'11", 270. Carl Anthony Thomas, 6'11", 250. So they're the same exact basically height. They are the same exact height. Basically the same weight. Uh, play the same position. And it's just a matter of uh, you like muster on your hot dog or not. Uh, just the difference between two players is a little bit different but, uh, on paper, but I don't think talent-wise they're too different. Um, Jill Okafor, guy out of Chicago, went to Whitney Young. Uh, really high recruit coming in for this year. Played excellent for Duke in their national championship team. Um, he averaged 30 minutes a game, shot 64% from the field, uh, 17 points a game, eight, eight and a half rebounds a game, one block a game. Uh, only downfall to him really was his free throw percentage. He only shot 50, 51% from the line. So that's something he's definitely going to have to work on, especially being a big man in the NBA. You're going to get hacked a lot. And like we've seen recently with um, DeAndre Jordan, and the Clippers teams have been kind of, you know, picking on his free throws, and so hopefully Jill Okafor is going to be able to pick that up once he goes pro. Other guy, Carl Anthony Toms out of Kentucky, other freshman, really great player for them. Uh, some consider him one of the best in the country. I mean, he's the first or second pick overall, the best on that Kentucky team. His stats are a little bit less, but you have to remember that. Kentucky also has seven guys going pro, and they split time a lot, and they went with this platoon system this year with Coach Calipari. So his numbers are a little bit different. He uh, shot 56% from the field. He's an 81% free throw shooter, which is way better than Okafor. Uh, he averaged 10 points a game, six rebounds a game, and uh, two blocks a game, which is more than Okafor, even though he played a third of the minutes. So, you know, Duke, Okafor, he played... You know, they got three guys going pro compared to currently at times so they have seven guys going pro. The numbers on paper are going to be different, but realistically, their playing styles are similar, and they're the bigger guys. Just Okafor seemed to dominate more and stand out more to people because he was playing so much, and he was just dominating, and they won the national championship. So a lot of people think he's going to go first. Uh, who are the first two picks going to be? Obviously, it's the NBA lottery, so we don't know who the first person is going to be might be the Knicks because the NBA is rigged. I'm, I'm just kidding with that statement, but uh, the Knicks got the second best chance with 19% and the Minnesota Timberwolves have the best chance with 25%. And just looking at their lineup and their big man up, Minnesota, that's the position they need. They already got Ricky Rubio. Um, Kevin Garnett's old. He's really old. I don't know how much longer he's going to be able to play. And Pekovic is not anything special for the most part. And then you look at the Knicks, and, you know, they got, you know, Langston Galloway, who I had to literally look up who he was before this interview because he was so irrelevant, and his numbers are really not impressive at all. And then you got Andre Bagnani, who's pretty solid, but, you know, I think one of these guys can come and take their place easily in the next year. So what do I think is going to happen? I do think Jahil Okafor will go number one overall if Minnesota does have the first pick. But if uh, New York ends up getting the first pick, I really do think that they're going to take Carl Anthony Toms. Um, he's a really good fit for what they need. Blocks a lot of shots, can really compliment Carmelo Anthony uh, really well. Phil Jackson has spoken very, very highly of him, and he's the guy that calls the shots in New York, and he's really done his homework and I think he does a lot of research on that stuff and he's a really good guy to trust with this uh, these kind of topics and these picks overall so I think if what happens with Minnesota I mean they completely control their own destiny um,
kind of similar debate between the Derrick Rose and the Michael Beasley draft a couple years ago with Chicago. And, I mean, Derrick Rose was better and has been better, but he's been plagued with injuries. It's just who do you think is better in the long term? Uh, Jill or Kapoor may seem better now, but don't doubt Carl Anthony Thompson for one second just because his numbers aren't as good on paper because he played on that Kentucky team. So, you know, the Knicks get that first pick. That's who I truly think they're going to go with. And uh, I really don't think you can go wrong with either of these players. I think they're going to be great players, you know, five years down the line. Both these guys could be potential all-star guys, all NBA teams, all uh, NBA defense teams. But just look for the Knicks to make a move like that. Don't be too shocked if they make that. Um, you might have heard it from me first. Other people have been saying this too. That's my opinion. But uh, take it, you know, take it as you will. But that's all the time we got today for the second episode of Sully Spotlight. Thanks for tuning in, guys. We'll be back next week with more material. And uh, take it easy this weekend.